I have a, a down eyed um, dry fly hook in the device. It's a, it's a partridge um, barbless. And uh, I've taken on all of the thread. I've left about a third of the hook shank um, bare. That's where the hackle will be in the head. I'm taking the thread back to the end of the bend. Um, you've got to, you can see how the bend is start slowly. You've got to be quite careful and not go too far down or the, the tail will point down. This is Coq de Lyon that I'm going to use for the tail. I've taken a bunch and I'm measuring it up against the hook shank. I want about the, the maybe a little bit longer than the length of the shank. So that's it placed. And then one turn to hold it in place. Now you can see how the tail points down. Now we're going to take a turn underneath the 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 um, bunch and then pull it up very tight. It's really firm up against that. That's lifted the tail. It's actually angled the tail up slightly and it's spread the, the bunch. I'll show you that in a moment. Um, and now I'm, I'm securing the, the, um, the thread is going to be the body. So the, the material, that's, anything that's underneath the body is going to be taken on smoothly. So I'm, I'm taking on all of the, the fibers um, for the full length of the body and touching turns. Um, and that's where the body will disappear into hackle, so I'll trim off there. Now you should be able to see that the the hackle fibers have spread out because of that, um, because they're so f tightly held by that loop of thread underneath the base. That's all I want. I don't want. I don't want to try and split the tail. I just want them spread. Now I'm going to go back and forward a couple of times to build up a bit of bulk in the body using the thread in touching turns and I'm going to let the thread um, spread um, so it's flat and I'm going to gradually build up a, a, a bit of meat to the body. I don't think it can be, um, it can be too fat but I don't think it should be just as thin as we can make it, as thin as um, the hook really. Now I'm going to choose a hackle. Um, I'm looking for barbs that are about one and a half times the hook gape. I'm preparing the hackle by trimming off some of the, the barbs. So I've got a few stubs at the, the end of the, the cut hackle, um, which gives me a bit more grip when I tie it in. And I'm tying it in with the, the coloured side, the, the, the shiny side out from the, the shank of the hook. So when I wind it forward, the, the colour will be forwards. There's an argument with that. You can do it the other way around as well, which is fine. But I prefer to do it this way. I'm building up a wee bit of bulk there because I don't want this to go... Um, I, don't, I, I don't want a sudden transition from thick to thin where the, the hackle will suddenly get shorter. So I'm doing touch and turns. Um, this is what makes me think this is a more modern fly. The, it's quite heavily hackled. It needs about half a dozen turns, maybe a bit more uh, of, of um, um, sharp hackle. You can't get that from uh, too easily from uh, uh, non-genetic uh, feathers. So just tying it off, turn the hackle off, and trim the tip away carefully. I managed to damage the thread here. Um, you can see that I've I've got a little bit of space at the eye, uh, at the head. Um, the the next stage is going to be a partridge hackle, um, which it's got a thin, it's got a tapering uh, stem. It tapers from thin at the tip to thick at the butt, and I'm going to be tying it in by the tip, um, so I can fit it in that space. There's the the, the partridge hackle I've chosen. <coughs> Uh, preparing the part of chackle simply means getting rid of the fluff at the base and um, pulling out some fibers uh, or straightening up the fibers so you free the, the, 
and a few fibers at the tip. Now you'll see when I take my hand away, that's what I'm tying in by the tip of the feather. Um, the first few turns of um, this hackle, the, the fibers are no longer, uh, the fibers are, are the, about the same length as the the the, um, the hackle that's already on the, the hook. It's only when you get to the last turn or so that the, the fibers suddenly become long. Now, in my head, you've got to think of this as a um, as legs. I'm pulling the barbs back just the way I would do with a wet fly hackle, and folding the hackle slightly, and I'll continue to do that through uh, the turn. So that's that's the the short fibers. You can see they are not very long. And I'm getting a wee bit longer. Um, you can vary the density of both these hackles, um, but I think this is this looks about right to me. A lot of this is judged by eye and experience. And I'm on the longest fibres now, um, and then trap the, the stem. The, the stem of the feather. I build up a little head. It's behind. Um, it's behind the ring of the the hook. And I'm going to fold the stem back to make absolutely sure nothing can come undone. Um, a small head to me means that the 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 thread head is smaller than the ring of the eye. Um, nicely shaped means that it's rounded. It's um, And uh, I'm going to do a double put finish. I'm doing three turns, and then the same again. And I'm trying to let it. Sh I'm trying to use the turns to shape the head as well. Cut away the thread, find the stem, and cut away the stem. And that's the, the fly more or less done. Now varnish. Um, varnish the head. And I'm using. Salire, uh, Venier Salire, thin varnish, and I'll use a couple of coats of that. Now I've pulled the hackles back out of the way when I've been tying, um, and once the head's varnished, I'll pull the head, I'll pull the hackles forward, and it's supposed to look like this sort of carefully arranged mess, <laughs> which is um, difficult to uh, explain, but. For fishing, this presents this makes a really nice profile. It's a good it's a good fishing fly. It's an interesting fly to tie. That's the olive jingler. For my version of the jingler, I used Coq de Lyon, which is a slightly exotic uh, type of spade hackle. It's um, grown in Spain. Originally it's grown in Spain. Uh, you can also get a um, whiting version of this. Um, these are the the Spanish version. These are plucked from mature birds, so they're quite big feathers. Very, very fine, very stiff barbs. Um, and they make a wonderful tailing uh, material. They've got other uses as well. Um, but it is unusual stuff. Um, simpler for the tails, it's simpler if you get hold of a, um, a, a red game cape, which you need. Um, it's one of the, the foundation cape colours, really. Um, and go to the sides of the cape, around here, and these feathers are essentially spade hackles. You'll find these um, on the fronts of... Um, You'll find these on the fronts of saddle hackles, uh, saddle capes as well, and you can buy, um, or you could buy these. Now, what you what you'll see is the barbs are all fairly long, so pretty useless as dry fly hackle, and there's very little fluff at the base of these, um, so that makes a it makes a good tail material. Not quite as sharp as, not quite as sharp or as long as the Coq de Leon, but. Um, 
you know, you get them thrown in with capes when you buy a cape. I used, um, for my video of the, the jingler, I used um, these hooks. It's the, it's a barbless um, Partridge Patriot, size 12, um, which were fine. Um, I think I used a different hook for the, um, for the magazine version. Um, you need a down eye dry size 12. Um, you fit the fly to the to the hook, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. This is Danville's um, 60 Flymaster. I use I use that. It's my favourite tie and thread. Um, this is a brown olive. Any olive is fine. Don't worry too much about the the, the thread. Um, um, I used uh, part of the shackle at the front of this fly. Now I have. A skin, um, and I took the feather from somewhere about here, on the the saddle of the bird. It gave me a, a browner feather, and that bar, that reddish brown bar, um, matches the. I think it matches the red game cape, so I think it works in really well. If you buy packets, which are perfectly fine, um, you probably get grey um, feathers from up this end, which work perfectly fine. It gives you a bit of contrast. Um, the challenge is to find, um, to sort through your feathers and find one that's going to give you um, fibres that are longer than the hackle. And it's the longest feathers that you, the longest fibres that you prepare have to be the, uh, the, the um, about one and a half times, one and a, one and a third times the length of your um, hackle. Uh, so they've got to be longer than your hackle, but it'll only be that last turn that gives you those long fibres. Um, and I think that's all the materials I use, really.